Venus and Furs by Leopold von Sacher Masick is a highly controversial book at the time it was released and it's still controversial now. Many people at the time viewed it as a book that just was not worth reading. Deplorable, perhaps. Many people didn't necessarily like the subject matter. However, it did garner a sort of cult following during the time and also for the rest of Sacher Masick's life. He received mail from female fans who claimed that they were just like Wanda Von Dunajou, who is the main female character and who is the dominatrix. She is the sadist in this book and he received quite a few letters in his life. A woman who read his book and saw something in it that they saw in themselves and thought that they had to reach out to him. So although many people found this book deplorable, not worth reading, total waste of time, trash even, there are people who still found this to be a gem, who found this to be helpful to them, who thought to themselves, man, I have these kinks. And this book is showing me that there are people who have these desires as well. Oh, and I should also make a point to tell you about sadomasochism, or rather the word masochist. It came from the author's last name, Masik. So if you're ever wondering about where the word masochist came from, it came from not only this book, but this author's last name. Similarly, with the term sadist or sadism, it comes from the Marquis du Sade, who wrote all about sadism. So I should probably also make it a point to tell you what this book is about. This novella follows a nobleman, Severin who is unlike most men. He has a fantasy, a kink, to be submissive wholly to a woman. Someone as beautiful as the goddess Venus, someone who wears lavish furs and regards them only as a thing, or just even gives him a new name, completely denouncing who he is as a person, who he is as an individual by giving him a different name, by making him sign a contract. Everything that he's ever wanted comes true. Now. Vonda is a woman who had just been recently widowed. They happen to have a very serendipitous meeting and he confides in her, tells her what his deepest desires are. He wants to be with her, but more than that, he wants to be dominated by her. Completely taken aback by this whole proposition, she says to him, well, I would rather just be your wife and have my wifely duties, but he isn't into that. He tells her that he wants to be compliant to her. She takes it into, into some consideration and after some time she says, okay, I mean, if this is what you want, this is what you want. So she plays the game for a while, but it doesn't suit her. So she tells him quite a number of times, like, I love you and I don't want to hurt you. And it makes me sad that I'm doing this to you. But he tells her, he gets down on his knees in raptured and says, this is what I want. I love when you treat me like this and he's brought to tears. Soon enough, it does grow on her, and Wanda takes him to different places and tells him that you're my slave. When we leave this country, you're gonna be my slave. You're gonna adopt this new name. You're going to basically sleep in, like, in the slave quarters, basically, and you're going to only be with me when I want you to be with me. Otherwise, you're going to be giving me my food, you're going to be sleeping somewhere else, I don't really care about you. And she and she begins to enjoy this, but every now and again, the facade begins to crack. She tells him that she just wants to be his wife, but he begs her that this is what he wants, and he loves this. So, of course, you know, she kicks him, she whips him, she degrades him verbally and physically, and he loves every minute of it. Now, not to give away more than I already have, I thought that it'd be important to talk about the impact of this novel and also the general reception and my last thoughts on the novel. This novel has the reception of, ugh, this guy is a sissy, this guy is a pussy, this guy is not a man because he chooses to be submissive to a woman. You know, I'm not really here to talk about gender roles, but generally speaking, this is what people talk about when they talk about this novel. Lots of people hate this novel because it's about a man who isn't a man, you know, a man by our society standards. And whether or not you agree with that, 
I think that this book is still worth reading. At the end of the day, does it really matter if the guy decided to do what he did? Does it really affect you personally? Or is it just awful for you to read because you're just thinking to yourself, what self-respecting man would do this? Well, I mean, Severin respected himself. This is what he wanted. He knew his desires and he sought them and he sought after them and he was able to find somebody who was able to give them the desires that he wanted. So there's nothing really wrong with that and there's nothing, you know, self-deprecating too much about wanting that. Now the acts that he endures in many ways are deprecating because he's completely being disregarded as a human However, again, though it is important to realize there are a lot of people like this, such as Bob Flanagan, one of the most famous super masochists in the world. He died, I believe, in the early 90s, but he has this really cool documentary called Sicko. I have it on VHS, and it's one of the best documentaries on masochism. If you want to learn more about masochism, definitely check that out. Um, I think you can find some trailers and even some interviews with Bob Flanagan on YouTube. They're really easily accessible. So definitely check that out if you really want to learn more about it and more about the fact that for him, masochism wasn't about completely degrading yourself. He was suffering from cystic fibrosis, if I'm not mistaken. So he sought some kind of control in a way by being a masochist because he was allowing himself to go through the pain that he wanted to go through when otherwise the cystic fibrosis was destroying him and making him weaker he was he had a choice basically to to be in pain and to seek somebody who was able to give that to him and he fell in love with the dominatrix who was his partner until he died and you know their their story is a really sweet one and sometimes it's a bit bizarre and sometimes it's a bit hard to watch but otherwise you know these people exist and there's nothing wrong with it you know it's sexual deviancy at its best and quite frankly it's in our popular culture so what's so wrong about it although you may think that severin is a sissy he's fucking fictional there are people out there who choose to be a sex slave you know like they are in a consenting relationship with someone and they're just like hey lady i want you to be my dominant and i will do everything for you while you whip me and beat me and that's okay my whole thing is that i just let people do their own thing i love hearing about people's sexual kinks i think that is some of the coolest stuff I've ever heard when somebody confides in me what their deepest desire is. I love it. And when people tell me that, I feel this intimacy with them. Not that I want to have sex with them, but like just that like I feel like I know them that much more. So, you know, if you want to tell me about your sexual desires, oof, leave them down below. I would love to read that. Although Severin is fictional, Leopold von Sacher Masik wasn't. The author of this novel also felt the exact same way as Severin, so in many ways this is a semi-autobiographical novel. He met his very own Wanda, and they also had a very similar contract to the book, and their contract, their real-life contract, can be found at the end of this particular edition. Overall, do I feel like this book should be read by anyone? Most definitely. If you do enjoy your classics, I definitely think that this book is for you. I think that Venus infers is the sort of controversial novel that lots of people want to read but never really have the time to read or never really seek it out. However, I am saying that this book is definitely worth your time to read. It's a very slim volume, so it should definitely be read by anyone who loves books that have been challenged, who love classics, who love books on sexual devi deviancy, sorry and books that just give an insight to an alternative lifestyle and even if this lifestyle mirrors yours do i think that you should read it oh fuck yeah i think this book will give you a lot of insight towards not only the author's life but also his most deepest fantasies that he may or may not have been able to live out in his life so overall I think that Venus and Furs was a fantastic read. I believe I gave it a 4 out of 5 on Goodreads. I think it's a great look on sadomasochism. I think that a lot is to be learned with this book. So definitely do check it out when you have the time. 
it was fantastic and now I'm sort of in the market to read more books on deplorable subjects. I'm sort of thinking about reading Fanny Hill or Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure by John Cleland next only because again it is something more about sexual deviancy even though it's not as deviant as this book. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do check out this book when you can and let me know down below what you thought about this. I would love to know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye. Girl, bye.